What's up, guys? I want to welcome you guys to the channel. Um, I've officially changed the name to the channel to On the Tools with Sal. Um, figured I'd do a little background on myself. I am um, a uh, water plant operator uh, for a local village. I run the uh, municipal water supply. Uh, we cover th approximately 3,000 accounts with uh, about 10,000 residents. And uh, I'm responsible for the day-to-day uh, -day distribution system and the water plant operations. Um, I have uh, three groundwater wells, and I also maintain the distribution system and an elevated storage tank that holds uh, 600,000 gallons. And I started. I went to. I started my career as an auto mechanic. Um, I went to. I went to BOCES here in um, Nassau County, Long Island, New York. There is a program called BOCES. It's the Board of Cooperative Education System. And it offers um, out-of-school uh, vocational training. So if you're a high school student, if you're a, depending on your program, if you're a sophomore, junior, or a senior, um, you get to go out either in the you either get to go to BOCES in the morning or in the afternoon. Um, I was able to take the automotive uh, technology program, and it was I graduated with a certificate with uh, that, that said I had two thousand hours of training, and it was a very 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 uh, in depth course. Um, I ended up going to UTI. I did Hot Rod U. Um, I had started down the path of doing the diesel industrial, um, power generation and all of that. And I ended up changing some of my phases. Uh, and I regret doing that. I, I would have liked, I probably would have taken a different career path. Um, fast forward to coming back home. I finished my associates, uh, in automotive technology at a local community college and I was working in the dealer, and I got laid off. So I needed a job. I got into the environmental business doing um, remediation, like oil spills, oil tank installs, and like pump and tank work um, with a, um, you know, doing gas stations and stuff like that. And I bounced around. It was like 2007, 2008, the economy tanked, and I was again without a job. And I landed at uh, Sloman's, which is a local uh, heating and air conditioning outfit. Um, and I was able to apply uh, my skills, my troubleshooting skills that I learned uh, in automotive and my pipe fabrication skills in um, the pump and tank business. And I was an installer. I did boilers and air conditioning. I did some service here and there. Um... And at the time, I was uh, in a volunteer fire department, and I had some deep roots in the community, and one of the water commissioners was also a member in the firehouse, and he's like, hey, Sal, you know, we could use some of your talent um, at the water district. Why don't you put your resume in? We're going to be hiring, uh, we're going to be hiring two guys shortly. So I didn't really think that that had any teeth, and... I was like, okay, here you go. Uh, I gave, I forwarded my resume, filled out some applications, and I never heard back. About six months later, I get a phone call uh, to come in for an interview, and I did. They really were impressed with my, my background, my, my experience, and I started at the water district. I was a distribution guy. Uh, this is a much larger district than where I am now, so they had dedicated crews, um, so I was on the distribution crew. I did all the water main breaks, fire hydrant repairs, service line replacements, um, and I, I was doing mock outs. Pretty, pretty, in, um, pretty busy district. And somebody had left. I had gotten my water plant operator's license in the interim, and I became a plant operator there. Very big district. We had a lot of treatment. Um, where I was was Hicksville. Um, Hicksville, Long Island is uh, home to 
it, it boarded with Beth Page. It was home to Grumman uh, Aerospace. Um, they built the F um, F fourteen Tomcat was built there, and um, they also built the Lem there to get us to the moon. Um, so with the aerospace industry comes a lot of random solvents and experimental chemicals and hey we don't know what to do with it go dump it in the pit in the back so that led to a lot of groundwater contamination um so the district the district that i worked in was kind of in the um was in the crosshairs of receiving all of that so our treatment was uh very extensive almost uh every well that we had had wellhead treatment on it um, I got to learn how to do a lot of stuff there. Um, and then in the winter of 2001 into 2002, I got a phone call from a guy I used to work with who is now the superintendent of a, vi of a village water department. And he was putting together his dream team because... At the time, it was only him as the superintendent and one of the operator. And he said, I need a guy that could come in and, and run my plants so I don't have to worry about it. So I took it as a, as, a, as a blessing. It was a good opportunity. And I made the jump. I went from a district that was five times the size of where I am now. So that's a little background on me. Um, I... Um, I figured I'd start this channel. I, I like to give... I'm on some of the Facebook pages. A lot of the Snap-on pages is guys that give good advice, guys that give great advice, guys that give terrible advice, uh, and guys that just repeat what other people say. So um, there's a couple guys on YouTube that I really like. Um, I, I love uh, the, the Talk Test channel. is pretty cool, and Project Form is legit. Uh, everyone loves Ave because he blows everything up. And I definitely love uh, CP the Tool Addict. Um, I like his uh, no BS attitude, which is pretty cool. And um, let's uh, let's get this channel off the ground and, and get it moving. And um, I had done a couple of videos on my setup. Um, I purchased my box back in uh, 2004. Um, and then when I left the automotive trade, uh, I kept it at a buddy's house and I was doing side work there. So I never really had the, um, never really had the urge to upgrade and go to a, go to an Epic. Um, and now I'm slowly running out of room. So, um, I'll go over some tool organization, uh, and some, you know, what to buy, what not to buy type of thing when you're a new guy starting out um i was very fortunate that i had um i had two really good senior guys that i worked next to on the line that um really were like hey buy this don't buy that um you know type of thing and uh, they helped me um they helped me save some money when i started out and they helped me work a little bit faster uh, like there was this one guy, Eddie, uh, not a lot of guys got along with him. Um, he was a little abrasive, not going to lie, but he's like, Hey, uh, I see you doing stuff with a hand ratchet, like taking down like skid panels. He's like, here, why don't you borrow, borrow this air ratchet until you can afford to buy a cordless drill or something like that. So he was a pretty cool guy. And, um, you know, it started, um, it started 20 years of, uh, you know, using tools and collecting tools and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, um, I really think in the automotive industry, uh, a lot of people don't understand. I think the only people that are kind of compassionate to what we go through is maybe teachers. Cause I know teachers come out of pocket a lot, uh, for supplies, um, teachers and maybe some of the other technical trades, you know, pipe fitters and, uh, HVAC guys, um, but your average, your average Joe Blow, you talk to a doctor about having to buy your own tools. They look at you like you got three heads. Um, so um, I think that's one of the problems with this industry is a lot of people don't understand um, what it takes um, even to just do an oil change. Uh, if, you want, if you're a new guy starting out and, you know, you're a C-Tech or a lube guy uh, and you're just doing, you know, oils, you know, oil changes, filters, cabin filters, 
you know, tires, maybe alignments, doing some undercar stuff. Um, you need access to a scan tool. You need a bunch of tools, power tools you're going to need. Um, stuff's not cheap these days. Um, you know, um, it's... It's definitely it's definitely hot out there, and I'm I'm very sympathetic to it because, um, like when I started out, a set of you know, uh, eight to nineteen millimeter flank drive wrenches was like, I don't know, like two fifty nine or something like that, and even then that seemed like a lot of money, um, but now like you're looking at like five hundred bucks for you know eleven wrenches, which is, it's very high. I'm not gonna lie, um. There's, I try to explain to some younger, some of the younger guys where to save money and where not to save money. Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta spend it to make it type of thing. So, um, yeah, I hope, um, I hope this gives you a little insight. Um, as far as some of my current projects, um, I just, uh, I got this air compressor, uh, from a friend of mine and I totally rebuilt it. I painted it, um, sandblasted it um i'm waiting for a new electric motor um i completely went through the pump and we replumbed it all and uh i'm also in the middle of a uh, p10 79 p10 uh, step van restoration uh for my friend um learning a lot of stuff on that um Fully rebuilt the front end. Um, we put a, a Holly Sniper EFI on it. I uh, just got done uh, doing a clutch and putting a transmission back in. I'm going there tomorrow. Tie up some loose ends. I got to uh, finish changing. Uh, finish changing the U joint out. I got um, I got the U joint out and apart, but I got the wrong one. I think. Um, oh no, that's what it was. I. I dropped the cap and I lost a whole bunch of needle bearings. So it was only 12 bucks. So I was just like, I'll oh, just buy a new one. I don't want to mess around. So uh, I got to tie that up. And then uh, my friend wants to do a, he wants to do a small drop, like a two inch drop kit on it with a um, whole new front suspension, new control arm, spindles, uh, springs. And he also wants to do a disc brake conversion in the rear. So that's going to require a new master cylinder and a whole bunch of brake lines. And uh, it should be a fun little project. We are going to be hindered by the weather because it's it's December. It's the third week of December here. And uh, we don't have a garage. We're doing everything in the driveway. So it stinks working outside when it's cold out. Um, what else is going on with that? That's pretty much that. And then same buddy. He went and bought a, like a 63 Jeep CJ3 based fleet van, which is a little parcel delivery van um, that Jeep used to make and uh, it was used for postal work and stuff like that. So um, that is getting a full custom job on it. He wants to chop it and... Uh, he's going to put a TDI, Volkswagen TDI powertrain in it. Um, I'm going to probably need help with that. Um, but anyway, lots of work coming up. Um, my buddy's been keeping me busy. Oh, yeah. So back to that step van. Um, I did a full wiring harness in it. New charging system. We did a uh, new water pump, radiator, radiator support. Uh, it doesn't have power steering. Uh, we did a new steering column, custom all new um, all new gauges from Speed Hut. Uh, he made a custom steering wheel. He's like a woodworker on the side, and um, yeah, just a lot of stuff going on. So I'm gonna try to. He's got a whole bunch of footage. I'm gonna try to work that into our channel, and um, we'll go from there. I hope um, everyone has a healthy and uh, safe holiday season. Um, it is, today is the 16th, no, what date is it, today's the 18th, oof, we're like running out of days here, so Christmas is knocking, and then we got New Year's right around the corner, um, so yeah, hope you guys have a safe holiday, 
And um, don't drink and drive. Call a cab if you need a ride home. I'll catch you guys later.